Hi, everybody, and welcome into the show. Well, as is the case at this time of the year, very few games being played. Tigers just won contest since last we visited with you, a battle against Drake in Atlanta, part of a multi-team event between the Tigers and the Bulldogs out of the Missouri Valley Conference. A little bit later on in the show, we'll take a look at that action. Now, of course, on the Clemson team, you have several newcomers, two of whom have quite a bit of experience in the college game already. Let's get to know more about them. Here's head coach Brad Brownell with Don Munson. Well, thanks, Pete. Obviously, only one game that we'll be talking about in uh, the show here today, but uh, I guess leading into it was exam week. I mean, these are student athletes, after all, here on the Clemson campus, and so had exam week, which was a different setup for you. Yeah, busy week for the guys, certainly. A lot of projects and papers due, final exams, um, different practice schedule, a couple extra days off. So. Uh, you just got to juggle it, do the best you can. Uh, you know, quick game with the Saturday afternoon game. We had finals all the way through Friday, so not an easy week, but, uh, you know, one we've done in the past. All right, one of the things we want to talk to you about here in this segment is is the two transfer, David Collins, Nas Bohannon that come in. Let's get to the transfer profiles brought to you by South Carolina Education Lottery. Since 2002, more than 147,000 lottery-funded scholarships and grants have been awarded to Clemson University students. Let's talk about David if we can first. Just tell us how it kind of came about bringing him here to the Clemson campus. Well, with both guys, we were trying to sign big physical wings uh, forwards that, that brought physicality, experience, toughness to our team. We thought we were a little thin inside. Uh, certainly have ha had plenty of guards coming back, had P.J. sign the two freshmen, so we just needed some 6'5", 6'6", guys that could rebound, attack the basket. Uh, David was a guy that we had seen and, and knew about, obviously, because he was a very successful player at South Florida. Uh, Nas was a little more under the radar. Uh, I was in the Horizon League where he played at Youngstown State, so I kind of was familiar with some people back that way and we kind of found out about him. Uh, but both were guys that were very good players at the places they came uh, and, again, met the criteria of, uh, you know, physicality, toughness that we were looking for, guys that needed to be able to come in and contribute right away. You know, same kind of build and size, but both of them bring something different to the basketball floor. David's certainly kind of a slashing type player. Nas is a guy, he can dribble, he can pass, he can back you down into the... Into the yeah, both guys. Uh, David's probably more of a scorer, Nas facilitator. Uh, both guys rebound very well. Uh, that was a big piece. We knew that losing Clyde and Amir, two of our better rebounders. Um, David can shoot the ball a little bit more from the perimeter. Uh, but both guys are, are, are more than capable of attacking the paint and making plays for themselves or others. And I think that's something that this team really needed was another dribble drive guy at the wing. And both those guys are capable of doing that. You know, both of them had had 30 point games in their careers. You know, it's funny, actually, Nas had 32 at Youngstown. David had a 30 point game when he was at South Florida. So it's, it's interesting to see, you know, Nas actually when it comes down to a single game, was actually the, uh, maybe a little bit better of a score in that one game. Well, he was a guy that played around the basket a lot. Um, certainly an outstanding rebounder, so he got some putbacks and finished plays. He can drive the ball from the high post very well, you know, makes foul line jump shots, those kinds of things. David's one of those guys that, that led the AAC in free throw attempts. So he's a guy that constantly is putting pressure on the defense, attacking the basket, uh, can make a three-point shot. but. Very good, both guys in the open court. I think you've seen that in our play so far this year. The other thing about him is interesting is to already see the chemistry that is between the two. They, when they're on the floor together, they seem to know where, where each other is. Yeah, they really do. I, I think, you know, they're Ohio guys back up there in Northeast Ohio. They kind of knew each other a little bit, not as well, obviously, they do now. But I think there's a good feel for one another. Obviously, when you come in and develop a kinship, two grad guys coming in together, they've spent a lot of time together. They're in some of the same classes together now, too. So you, you see the chemistry between the two, and they certainly like playing well and play well together. The other thing, I guess the last thing, is that you got to be very excited about to see, okay, what the months of January and February are going to hold for them because they're just going to get better on the floor together. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, you know, it, it, roster management, building your team, uh, extremely challenging this day and age as a coach because, you know, last year's team that went to the tournament was much easier. We had basically everybody coming back. We had older, experienced guys that knew our system. We knew our players. It was easy to, to manage our personnel. This year has been much different. You got three new freshmen. You got two grad guys. Uh, you're not as old. Uh, trying to make every all the pieces fit. We got P.J. Hall, who's an emerging great player. And just it's been a little bit of a challenge to kind of put all the pieces together and get everybody to understand their role and then accept their role. And, uh, you know, the roles are going to be different. Uh, you know, when you're a transfer and you've kind of been in one place for a while, 
and then you're asked to do some different things, that's, that's not easy. And so we've had a lot of things we've had to work through here at the beginning of the season. I do think as we continue to build and get a little bit more comfortable with one another, our best basketball is in front of us. When we come back, we get to know another Tiger newcomer, a big freshman who looks to make a big impact. It's just ahead. Inside Clemson Basketball with Brad Brownell is brought to you by Carolina Ford. Built for the Carolinas. Built Ford Proud. Visit your Carolina Ford dealer today. Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Whether you're in the stands or in your living room, nothing goes better with basketball than Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Welcome back to the show. Well, Ian Shefflin is a post player, inside guy who brings a lot of success from his high school days at Grayson High near Atlanta to the Clemson program in his first season playing for the Tigers. Let's get to know him a little bit better with Tigers on the Inside, presented by Founders Federal Credit Union. Relax, Tiger fans, with Founders Federal Credit Union. My name is Ian Shefflin, and I'm from Loganville, Georgia. Uh, I played basketball and football in high school. I stopped playing football my sophomore year, and the transition to basketball was pretty easy. My freshman year, I didn't start, but I played some good minutes on a team that made it to the Final Four. And then going to my sophomore year is when it really started to pick up, my recruiting, all that. I started my sophomore year and never really looked back from there. But my best year was in junior year. We had a really good team. We were ranked second in the country at one point, and we ended up losing the state championship by one point on free throws, which is still, still nags me to this day. Uh, honestly, surprisingly, I've been up to Clemson quite a few times for football, and I really, really loved it here. It just, the environment, everything was just perfect. The football coach, Mickey Kahn, the safety coach, he was the head coach at Grayson for a long time, and we used to play with his son growing up. Football, we used to play against each other, but we had that connection. He actually lived right down the road from me for a long time. So every, we always grew up around Clemson, knowing about Clemson, what they do. So I mean, just pregnant to my family, they were they were happy, excited. My first workout here was awful, I, that's to say the least. I was out of shape, uh, I could barely finish the workout, and it was just miserable. But as the summer went on, I ended up losing weight, everything started getting a little easier, but the jump from high school to college is a whole different level, and if you're not ready, I mean, it's gonna, it's just going to hit you in the head. He's a guy who played at a very high championship level as a high schooler, and he has certainly grown in his early days in Brad Brownell's program. It's apparent by his play. Now, you're likely planning to attend a game or two or even more than that this season at Little John Coliseum, and a new ticket plan has been unveiled. And more on that as we go inside the program. My name is Drew Waddell, uh, and I'm on the sales and service staff with uh, Clemson Athletics and IPTE. On top of uh, single game tickets, and uh, we also have group tickets as well, so a group of 15 or more can come out uh, and everybody can sit together. Uh, the special packages that we have, it's a six game package, uh, either for weekday games or weekends. Uh, weekend games, uh, you package up six games that you'd like, that's $100, uh, and then your weekday games, the same thing. Uh, except that's going to be $75. We have a lot of great weekend games. Um, I think in January, Boston College, Pittsburgh. So definitely, you know, whether you go with a weekend package or a weekday, you're getting your money's worth. I mean, obviously online is great, uh, but you also have the opportunity to call us. Um, you can dial 864-656-2118, and we can have someone help you out. So uh, baseball and softball, those are the two spring sports. So we're currently on sale right now for uh, season tickets. So then we'll have uh, some other options as we get into the new year. Coming up, the Tigers and Drake Bulldogs in Atlanta. We'll show you the highlights, but first, here's what's ahead on the Clemson schedule. Well, welcome back to the show. Now, before we get to Drake highlights, we want to recognize Hunter Tyson first and foremost. He was put up for an award, uh, the, uh, the Senior Class Award, this past week, and that's a big thing. Yeah, he's an outstanding student athlete. Uh, graduated Clemson in three years. Um, just really bright. Uh, a guy that, that takes his academics very seriously. Father was a principal and now is a superintendent back there in Charlotte area. So uh, academics, high priority for he and his family. 
And then a, a guy that I'm really proud of as a player. He's a guy that's that we originally thought we would redshirt as a freshman, and uh, had some injuries needed him to play. Uh, he played in several games, was was very productive at times, and has just kind of built his career. Last year as a junior, he got to start some, uh, really about half the games last year. Now this year, he's a full time starter, a guy who's having a very good senior year, and somebody that you're proud of because he's developed and worked his way through the program. All right, so going into Atlanta and the showdown with Drake, this Drake ball club you knew coming in was going to be a difficult test. Yeah, very good. Older team that, that really has everybody back from a team that went to the NCAA tournament last year and added uh, the coach's son who uh, could have gone anywhere. Iowa, Iowa State, all the, the Big Ten schools were recruiting. He decided to stay, play for his dad. Really a talented group that will probably win the Missouri Valley. All right, highlights are brought to us by our good friends of the Carolina Ford Dealers. Built for the Carolinas, built for proud. Visit your Carolina Ford Dealer today. For college basketball. All right, Coach, so obviously you, you come to Atlanta. You know, I'll tell you what, you put together a great effort, I thought, against Drake. Yeah, really good win against a team that, uh, you know, coming off a nice NCAA tournament appearance. They're basically their whole team back. Uh, we knew this was going to be a hard game. and. Uh, I thought we played great. Uh, give them credit for battling back late and sending the game to overtime. And then uh, our guys just took control from the start and got a really good and much needed team win. And you go back and you just look at early on in the first half, you get down early, but you're just not going to let things die. You, you're able to battle back and, and come and take a lead. Well, Alex Hemingway was a huge key. I thought his threes in the first half, three threes, were, were a big difference maker for us. You know, he probably had his best practice week this week. Uh, I really felt like he was going to play well, and, and those threes were much needed. So I thought he got us off to the, the good start after uh, we didn't play very well the first couple of minutes, but he got us the lead at halftime. And you also got finally got an outside three from P.J. Hall. He'd been struggling a little bit outside the arc, but finally got him to knock one down. Yeah, he did, and that was good to see, and it was much needed. And, uh, you know, he passed up one and had a turnover, and I called his number again and said, hey, man, we need you to make that. Like, that's the shot that's there. You know you can do it. He knocked it down. He was huge, 22 points, 13 rebounds. I thought he played a great game. Alamir Dawes also was big for you. Uh, at that uh, spot in the first half in particular, he played some really key minutes for you. He did some really good things, you know, at the end of the half with some baskets. But the most impressive thing to me today was he had five assists and no turnovers. And that's 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 big improvement for him. He's a guy that we've really had to work on his passing and decision making. Obviously, he had the huge three uh, in overtime. And then he made the great drive and kick pass to, to Nick for his three in overtime. I thought those were big plays. You lead by seven at halftime, 39 to, to 32, come out in the second half, and you keep that lead. You go to the first the first time out you know, of, uh, of the second half, and you're still up by, by nine points. Yeah, played well, and, uh, and then Drake got hot. DeVries got hot there. We lost him on a couple plays. Alex had a miscue on one. Uh, then they ran a couple nice actions for him, and he made a tough shots. Um, that's why they're good. They, they've got a lot of weapons. They can go small lineup. They went small lineup at times. And that made it hard for us defensively, especially it was not an easy matchup for P.J. So then you try to win the war with with P.J. inside and where we do have a size advantage. And so it was kind of a it was a coaching, you know, chess match a little bit today. And uh, we were fortunate to get a good win. Obviously, coming down the stretch, uh, it gets tied up at 74, but then you get to the overtime period. You knock down a couple of free throws to give you a three-point lead, and that seemed to really set your team at ease. Yeah, we had good possessions early, and I thought it was important to get the lead uh, and, and just to give our guys their confidence back. We talked all week about, hey, we're going to finish game. We're, you know, Let's have positive body language, positive attitudes. Let's just keep talking that through the four, uh, through the 40 minutes or as long as it takes. And today it was as long as it takes, 45 minutes. So uh, just really proud and happy of the way our players competed uh, and especially the way they finished in overtime. Two big threes also for you in overtime, one from Alamir Dawes and then obviously a long three-pointer by Nick Honor that really solidified things for you. Yeah, those were the, you know, the two big shots in the, in the overtime to, to give us the win. I thought we did a lot of other good things where we got it inside, got fouled, uh, but those shots were really the separating factors uh, of overtime. And just winning, winning away from home is big for your ball club at this point in time. No, it is. This was this was much needed. It was it was you know well earned. Our guys worked so hard this week with finals and all that was going on back home with school. And then you know we had very good practices, great attitude. You know we're very disappointed after last week uh, at Miami, but the guys came in and worked. We got better, and uh, I think it showed in our performance today. 
Well, time for our chalkboard segment, and we're going to show a little spread ball screen, which seems to be more and more where college basketball certainly is going. This is a play between Bohannon and also Collins. So as we take a look at this from the Rutgers game, you know, everybody has a, has a piece in this, but this is also just a, a little bit of just, hey, knowing where you are on the floor. Yeah, it's really pretty simple. It, it's a situation where you got four guys out on the perimeter and your five-man P.J. Hall comes up and sets a ball screen. In this case, it's for Nas. Whenever you're doing ball screen offense, spacing is more important than anything else. So the, guy, the other four guys being as far away from each other as possible, David Collins is in the corner, and what he's doing is he's reading the, his defender. His defender is staring at the ball, so that cues him to make a back cut to the basket. Nas does a great job of coming off the pick eyes up and then finds David for the back cut. But again, you can see here on the weak side, both the, both offensive players, Hunter Tyson and Alamir Dawes, are really just spread out of the way, giving Nas an option to go either way. He sees David's defender staring at the ball, and so they, they go make a, a, a backdoor cut on their own. You talk about the, the, the people staying outside the perimeter. That's important for Tyson over here because he's got to keep Harper occupied. He does, and Hunter, you could see at the end there, Hunter was moving back to the corner if David didn't have the shot on the layup, then Hunter Tyson was to move to the corner for a, what we call the drift pass for from David Collins to Hunter in the corner for three. So there's a couple options that are there, um, but really the first play is made because Nas has his eyes up and David makes a great hard cut to the basket. Coming up, the player who added star power to the slab five. It's just ahead. Baseline, nothing there. Gives it an honor. He'll drive left side. High off the glass, no good. Collins, though, with a nice one-handed tip. Beautiful. Ten points now for Collins. And a ten-point lead for Clemson at 49-39 with 14.52 to go here second half. Welcome back to the show. As you may know, Clemson legends are being honored at Little John Coliseum for the first time this season with their jerseys hanging from the rafters, and they're also being recognized at various games. Well, one of them is a player who was a big part of those three NCAA tourney teams under Rick Barnes in the 90s. We remember Tiger Legends with Tim Beret. It's brought to you by Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Whether you're in the stands or in your living room, nothing goes better with basketball than Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. This week, Greg Buckner. Greg Buckner was not a highly recruited player out of the basketball crazy state of Kentucky. He actually signed with Rick Barnes in the 1993-94 academic year to go to the University of Providence. Uh, so in those days for him to come with Coach Barnes, who had taken the Clemson job, uh, you had to get a release from Providence. And so when Pete Gillen came aboard, he called some coaches in the state of Kentucky and asked them about Greg Buckner, and they told them that they had really didn't know much about him. Uh, so because the, he didn't, he, they didn't hear that much about him, Pete Gillen let uh, Greg Buckner come with Coach Barnes to Clemson, and thank goodness that was the case uh, because he certainly became one of Clemson's most consistent players, averaged in double figures all four years, was the ACC Rookie of the Year in 1994-95 when he was one of the slab five in Rick Barnes's first Clemson team. And then his sophomore year, he, along with Terrell McIntyre and others, took the Tigers to the first NCAA tournament for the program in six years. And then he just got better and better uh, in 1996-97, uh, helped the Tigers to the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament, got off to a great 14-1 start uh, that year, and then uh, had a terrific uh, senior year in 1997-98, again taking us to the NCAA tournament. Just a six foot four, six foot five player who had such great all around abilities. He could shoot from the outside. He could post guys up down low. Such a hard uh, worker at both ends of the court. And he went on to a terrific career in the NBA and is now a, a coach in the NBA. So uh, he's going places when it comes to the uh, coaching profession and is certainly uh, deserving of having his jersey raised in the rafters at Clemson University. Well, a couple of games upcoming for the Tigers. Miami of Ohio visits a team that Buckner helped lead the Tigers to victory over in the 1997 NCAA tourney. And then a Saturday showdown against the South Carolina Gamecocks. The Palmetto rivalry moves to the court in men's hoops. Next week, same time, we look back on the action from those contests. For now, for head coach Brad Brownell and Don Munson, Pete Yannity, thanks for joining us and so long.
Inside Clemson Basketball has been brought to you by Lending Tree. Shop and compare loans, credit cards, insurance, and more. Lending Tree. Founders Federal Credit Union. Relax, Tiger fans, with Founders Federal Credit Union. This has been a production of Clemson Athletic Properties.